Good afternoon and welcome to our first quarterly presentation from the South Dakota Rehabilitation Center for the Blind in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. My name is Mary Carroll and I am the home management instructor at the center. I work in the skills of blindness area. We have four different skill areas in that area. We have home management, we have O&M, which is orientation mobility, and we have uh, assistive technology and communications. So today we thought it would be interesting to cover some things in home management uh, that we teach here and that are very helpful to blind and visually impaired. The Rehabilitation Center is a place for people who have either lost their vision or have limited vision or maybe they just need a refresher on their skills. So today I'm going to talk to, about some equipment that I use and that we use as uh, teachers here at the center to make people's lives a little more easier when they lose their vision. I've broken it down into six sections. So uh, the first section that I'm going to talk about is pouring and uh, liquid measuring. So I think pouring is one of the most common things that everybody has to do. So for me, I use the fingertip method. That is the most sure method of being able to pour. And so I find the thumb with my, my, my spout with my thumb, and then I place my pointer finger just to probably an inch or half an inch in to my glass and I pour out my pitcher. Now also while I'm pouring, I listen, but I wait for it to hit my finger. Oops, and look at, I almost overfilled, which is scary because I was talking too much. Um, but that happens, you know, we get discussing things and we talk too much, but I made it. We didn't do too badly here. So that is important to, know that you want to concentrate when you're pouring. Also, the sound of the liquid in the glass and the weight of the cup is really important. So if I hold my cup up, I can pour, I can hear the sound, and I can feel the weight. Now I did much better that time. I didn't feel it too far, which is very good. Also, we want to be sure to remind people with low vision that you can use a cup that contrasts to the liquid that you're pouring. So let's say they're pouring white milk. Maybe they should have a dark cup so they would be able to see the um, white milk pouring into the cup. Um, also for hots, we use a liquid level indicator. Now this little device, we have been practicing with this and it makes a very loud noise when the circuit becomes together, when the water hits the two prongs. It has a speaker on the top and it's just a nine volt battery underneath. And then you place it inside the cup like that. Now, they tell us that nobody can hear the sound um, and you just pour again and the sound will but they say that you can't hear that so but it really does make a big large loud sharp uh, noise and um, it works really well for hot liquids um, and you can buy um, uh, liquid level indicators that don't have such a piercing sound as this one does. They work really, really well for hots, okay? So, now, the next thing I wanna talk about is our liquid measuring pitcher. 
And this is one of our newest additions um, to all of our equipment that we have at the center. Uh, it is to measure liquids. And in the last year, I've had two or three people come and ask me, how can I measure out liquids more accurately, more accurately than just with, you know, a dry cup or a dry measuring cup or a spoon? And this is the only thing that I have found that works. So you turn it on. Okay, oil. Uh, All right, it down. Okay, I'm gonna set it down. It just said cooking oil, zero. Yeah, it threw it down. Yep. And it's kind of a talkative machine. Um, and you have to be very careful because if you touch the pitcher too hard, it will measure its weight. So the bottom or the second button down is the units of measure. So if you press that, fluid ounces. Fluid ounces. Oil. And fluid ounces. Okay, I'm gonna go down to the bottom one and put it to water, because that's what we're gonna do. Fluid ounces. Cooking oil, water. And fluid ounces. Now it's on water, so you can change it from fluid ounces. Fluid ounces. US pints. To pints. US pints. US fluid ounces. Milliliters. 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 Liters. Liters. Pints. Fluid ounces. We're going to leave it on fluid Water. ounces. Okay. Fluid ounces. Now I think I have my picture here. So we're going to leave it on water. Fluid ounces. And we're going to pour, but I'm going to try not to touch so it'll pour out. Three. At one pause. Oh. See what it says finally when I got done pouring. Seven fluid ounces. Seven fluid ounces. And that works out really, really well. This will turn off if you don't touch it in 30 seconds. Um, so you can just pour out what you measured. Um, the reason that they have they have water, water. milk, milk and cooking oil. And that would be measuring cooking oil, but we just still have the water in our, okay, so our pitcher. The cooking oil is very hard to measure because you can't feel cooking oil on your fingers when you use the um, fingertip method to pour into a measuring cup. Um, some people have said, oh, well, put your oil in the refrigerator. I, I don't know, I just can't do that. So um, you just have to put a plate underneath your cup that you're filling or use one of these uh, liquid measuring pitchers to measure oil. And it works really well. It works really well. Okay, so now we've done pouring. The next uh, section I always work with my students is uh, liquid and dry measuring. And the first set of cups that I'm going to show you, these are our dry measurers and they are notched and we file these off ourselves with a file and I take time and I sit and I file, file, file to get that nice notch into the cup. You can use the hard plastic cups, you can use, you know, the a little bit softer plastic. We can most always file any kind of a plastic cup. Uh, the metal ones I haven't done, just the plastic ones. So the one cup has one notch and then we have a wide notch for the three-fourths. What I like about this is that you can feel this with your thumb and then you don't have to look down if you have low vision to see your cup and you can just do it real easy with your thumb and it's very quick and you can identify what cup you need. The last thing I'm gonna show you is two is a half a cup, three is a third and four is a fourth of a cup. And those work out really, really well. Um, we have another set of tactile cups and these have the actual uh, numbers raised on the handle and they also have raised numbers inside the cup um, so if you want to use them for liquids you can because they're 
they have the rates numbers in the cup. But you have to learn how these numbers feel. So you, you have to learn what the numbers and letters feel like. But they work well too. Now, the next set of cups is our contrast cups. And these are nice in that they have the, I think, white letters on there with a black dark cup. And that is very good for people with low vision. All the students who use these like them very well. And we have a set of measuring spoons that is like this too. Um, and they're just really nicely contrasted between the letters and then the, the cup handle. The last set that we have is a set of colored measuring cups. And the cup is a red one. I believe the half cup is green and the third of a cup is orange and then the fourth of a cup is blue. And they work really well. We Sometimes if someone has trouble uh, reading recipes, we make, um, if they have low vision, we make picture recipes. So we can say, okay, we need two um, of the red cups of flour. Let me show the picture of the flour, the red cup, and we have the number two on their recipe and they can follow a recipe like that, which is really, really nice. So we keep the colored measuring cups here and they also work well with people who use their low vision. The last um, type of measuring that we do is liquid measuring besides in the pitcher. Um, we have what we call, oh no, I will, I will come back to my dry measuring spoons, but I will do this since I have my other ones out. So, the measuring spoons are ladles, okay? They have long handles and we put like vanilla and almond extract in um, wide mouth jars so that we can uh, bring our spoon, I'm gonna open the jar here. Our vanilla we keep in this jar and it's nice. And then you just put your spoon in there and you keep wherever your bowl close at hand and you bring that up and then you have, I gotta get that out of the way, your level spoon and you can bring it over here and you get that nice um, spoon of vanilla that you measured out, which is excellent. And I love this. I don't know about you guys, but uh, I've had to uh, try to pour into dry measuring spoons to measure our vanilla. And that's really hard to do. So the ladles are excellent. The last set of measuring spoons, again, are both colored and notched. And we just, again, use a regular file and make these. So all the tablespoon measurers are with wide notches. So one tablespoon has one notch, wide notch. A half a tablespoon has two wide notches on the same side, and the two tablespoon has a wide notch on one side and a wide notch on the other side. So you know that you're getting two whole tablespoons in one scoop, which is good. And then the teaspoons are all um, with the small notches. So one teaspoon is one and so forth, just like the cups. So that is uh, how we measure uh, without vision. Uh, the next thing that I work on with students is cutting and chopping. Now you're going to find that cutting and chopping is one of the things that people are most fearful of. And the reason they are, well, it's because the knives are sharp <laughs> and they don't want to cut themselves. So I'm gonna take my stuff off here a little bit so that I can show you the first thing that everyone loves is the contrast cutting board. And this is the black side, yes. And this is the white side. 
And so people with low vision can choose which side they want to cut on. So now we have our melon. And I don't know if this would be on the black side. I think that the, or the tomato, this is the black side. So I don't know, I would choose the tomato here. And then let's see, I don't know. We'll turn it over and we can choose. But they can do that with their, their vision. They can choose what they want to use, which is awesome. But that, they love these. All of my students love who have low vision love this cutting board. All right. Uh, the next thing I want to talk about is the cutting glove. Now, I was... Uh, really excited when I came here to know that they actually do have cutting gloves and you just put them on your hand and then if you're cutting you can still hold your food and cut and you don't have to worry about your fingers getting hurt. Um, it really and you'd have to I don't think you can cut through this I never have and I've had these for years and years and years. So they work really good. They also remove the fear that you're gonna get your fingers cut. Um, so the cutting glove is really nice and they have a, a medium sized one and a um, large size. Another thing that I use here is the finger guard. And you just put it in your middle finger like that and then I'll turn it back over. And then it can sit down here and you can still grab with your fingers. It's um, it's a piece of metal and uh, it's kind of curved at the top. And then the bottom is, it's, it's kind of straight on the bottom, but it, where the finger, there's a little depression where you can put your finger in there. And that's curved, and so it curves. So then you have that, and it kind of hides your fingers. And then you, again, can use your knife to cut. And it just keeps it away. It just keeps it away. Um, it works really, really well. Another thing we talk about as far as cutting, uh, most times it seems to me that Accidents happen when we either are going too fast or we're chatting or we're just having a great time and we're doing our work and we forget to move our hands back when we've um, decided how large a piece of uh, vegetable needs to be. So I always tell them you have to keep your hands above the knife and uh, don't go 50 million miles an hour, which is something that is hard for a lot of people to do. Um, and we just learn how to cut and we cut vegetables and it works amazing. Um, and you really don't have to be afraid to cut and chop. The last um, couple of things, this is called, I wanna show this one, an easy potato peeler. It also has that little hole where you can put your finger in here like this. Now, I put it in this hand. You can see how my potato peeler is. Now, if I had a pretend potato, I'm just gonna use my, my melon just for to use it. And then you would just peel. And you don't even have to grasp it. You can just peel and it works really good. So anybody with kind of a grasping issue could use this and it works really well for peeling, peeling potatoes. The last thing that I have I'm going to put the tomato on there, is the slap chopper. I love this for cutting onions. Um, it works amazing. It has a little bottom on you, take it off, and you can put two or three pieces of onion under here, and you put it down, and then you slap it a few times, and then you get beautifully diced onions. So that works excellently. Um, we use this one a lot. 
All right, so that's my cutting and chopping um, section. Uh, the things that are, are mostly used in home management. The next area, I really had trouble figuring out what to call it because it's a variety of um, items that we use in the kitchen. Uh, so the first thing that just is at my hands right now is the talking meat thermometer. And this has uh, become a really useful um, piece of equipment in the, in the kitchen. It's very helpful for blind people um, to tell you when your meat is done because that's really hard to do when you can't see. So it has three buttons on it. The top one is the talk button. So if you press that, it's going to tell you the temperature of your food. The one on the left side here on. turns it on. And then this particular button on the right will turn on a sound. And that just lets you know that the thermometer is measuring. So now if you wanted to measure, I'm gonna just use my um, hand as a piece of meat you would stick the thermometer in the fattest portion of your meat and let it there until that sound stops. I'm gonna hold it in my hand and see if we can get it to move. So it's only, it was only 81 degrees today. My hands are colder than yesterday. So, um, but it really does work well on meat and it is very helpful to make sure like uh, pork roast is done, beef roast is done, hamburgers are done, uh, chicken breast is done. It just really works excellently. Let's see here. The next thing that, is a very popular piece of equipment is called the double spatula. And it is sh shaped like a spatula, but it has a spatula on the bottom. And then it has, its handle is connected to another handle of a spatula and it has a spring inside. So when you squeeze it, it, can go together and it feels like one spatula. And then when you loosen it, you have a spatula on the bottom and a spatula on the top. So now I'm gonna bring my pan over here. And our chicken just appeared in the pan, which is awesome. So here's our chicken. And I hold onto the handle of my pan and I finding my chicken. And I just can hold it like that and turn it over and then let it go. And it works amazing. It works absolutely amazing. Uh, we can turn grilled cheese with it. You can turn pork chops. You can turn hamburgers. Um, it just is really, really nice. So that's the double spatula. And we'll give her my chicken. We're going to keep my pan here for a minute. And we're gonna talk about another thing that is wonderful. I'm gonna show you two things at once. Uh, we're gonna show an egg ring and uh, the egg cracker. But I can't seem to locate my egg ring. There we go. So we're gonna put the egg ring in the pan. This is made out of silicon. And I like this because it doesn't get hot like the metal style ones. And it has the little round knob at the top that is made out of that silicone also. And so when, if you need to take it off the egg, you can um, touch it and you're not burning your fingers. So I'm gonna set this in the pan. Now with, this is our egg cracker. I wanna show you this too. Um, this is a piece of equipment. It has two plastic rings on each side. It has, a handle that you squeeze on the bottom. When you squeeze the bottom for the handle, it opens up like that and cracks the egg and then the egg falls out and the shell is kept in the cracker. And it works 
really, really well. I have an egg here and we're going to demonstrate it. So here's my egg cracker. I'm gonna put points out of the, you know, through the little circles. There we go, and I'll show you that. So it's in the cracker like that. And then we're gonna find our egg ring. We're gonna hold it over that. And you can do it as you're warming up your pan with your little bit of butter in the bottom. You can put your egg in there and it's perfect. Now, see, the egg has been released. The shell is still in the cracker, okay? All right, I'm gonna hand that to my helper over here. I am gonna keep my pan a little bit because I wanna show you the stove in just a moment. But uh, when you use the um, silicone egg ring, we crack the egg into the pan, cook it for a minute 15 so that the bottom of your egg gets finished. And then you can remove the egg ring and go under it with a spatula and turn your egg over. And then all you have to do is time your egg. So if you like a really soft egg, you maybe do 15 more seconds. If you like a harder one, you might do um, you know, 30 or 40 more seconds. It just depends on what you want. But the egg rings work really well and they also work really well for making small pancakes. And, they, and you can just lift them right off once the pancake has cooked on the bottom. So I'm gonna take this over here and set it back on my stove. There we go. This also, the egg cracker also has a separator that you can hook on and it sets below where the egg comes out. And then you can just, it'll keep the yolk in there and the whites will fall because it has the same kind of uh, slots in the side as a regular egg separator. Another thing that works really well here is I find that we have to um, drain hamburger or drain pasta and it's hot and it is messy. So I have this pot strainer and it has, it, I'm gonna describe it a little bit. It has a, I don't know, a clip on each end and you clip it on to the pan. There we go. And you do that before you get it going on the stove and you put your water in and boil your noodles. And then when they're done, all you have to do is turn it like this and the water comes out and the contents of your pan stays in your pan, which is wonderful. So like if you had it on the edge of a frying pan, you could drain out your grease, but your meat would stay in, which is awesome. And this is a small pan that I'm using. So this fits, it'll fit on a frying pan. So it works really, really well for that. Now, also with um, our silicone rings, we have the silicone mat, but I'm not ready to go to the stove yet, but I had this in my hand. So I love to put these on the cookie sheets when I bake cookies. Um, they just make it so easy to take the cookie off. Um, and I'm gonna leave this right here for now. And I wanna show you the toaster tongs. Now, so often when we get um, younger students, they are afraid to take toast out of the toaster because it's hot. Um, so they don't really wanna touch it. So we have these tongs and they're made of wood and they, you, ha you have to squeeze them. And then what I teach to do is we find the toaster, the edge, and then they can come down here where it's not hot so they can have a, we're gonna find our toast, get our toast. See, I wanna use my, my own fingers. We can't find our toast, there it is. There, got it. 
All right, so when we find our toast, we take it out and we set it down, okay? I do teach them to put their toast in when the toaster's cold and they do that with their hand, but you could use the tongs again. I'm gonna try that a little bit better. And this is a practicing skill that you have to do to find that toast. Okay. There we go. So now we have our toaster tongs, our toaster, and I'll put the toast back. Works really well. The next couple of things, we're doing really well, um, are, are different types of timers. The first one we teach with is this simple talking countdown timer. It has four buttons. It has an hour button, a minute button, uh, a talk button, and the stop and start. So if you wanna have, you just press one and you press that minute button once, and then you press the start and timer on. And if it'll, when it gets down to the end, it doesn't talk while it is counting down. Um, it will say time is up and it has a little beeping that happens. And then you can just turn it off, turn it off. And then if you don't want that anymore, you can clear it out with our minute button. And it just can, I think it goes up to 59 minutes in the minutes and then I haven't done how far it'll go in hours. I don't know that, just the minutes I know. So that's an easy talking timer and it works and it's like $10. So it's affordable and helpful. Um, this one uh, has a special place in my heart because I learned to use this type of a timer. It is a braille timer and all around the edge of the timer, there are two dots and one dot, two dots and one dot. And then there's three dots at 15 minutes. There's three dots at 30, three dots at 45. And then each, the one dot is for two and a half minutes, then two dots is five, 10, you know, 12 and a half, 15. And you just move the timer. Now I'm not gonna move this one because you have to let it run all the way out because it's a spring timer. So once you turn it on, it's going to click for a long time. So you just move it. If you wanna set it, you have to take it past 10 and then set it um, underneath 10 if you want that. But if you get it past 10, you can just move it to 30. But anything under 10, you have to bring the hand, um, button past 10 and then back to get it to work correctly. And that's a braille timer and they work wonderful. All right, we are doing well. So now we're getting to uh, one of my favorite things is the silicon um, uh, baking gloves where you can either, I just call them, I don't know, hot gloves. Uh, and they are silicon, they have grip, on the fingers. And I like the fact that they have fingers because it feels better when you're holding a pan to be able to move your fingers around and grab onto the pan. The mitts seem so big and cumbersome. And these kind of are cumbersome, but they really feel good um, to hold onto your pans. You can hold onto them like you can feel the pan real well. Um, one thing that I have learned is that you do not want to put your hands in these gloves wet because it, uh, the heat will go through them. If your hands are wet, it doesn't if they're not. Um, but if your hands are wet, you think, oh, I don't need to dry my hands. I'm going to put them in the glove anyway. Don't do that. Just dry them off. Take the extra five seconds to dry your hands. So these gloves are great. They go up to right here. I also have a pair of these kind of gloves that goes clear up to my elbow. And those are the favorites of my young students. They uh, feel really safe with the ones that go up to the elbow. Okay. Now the last few things as far as this tray is concerned, again, we have this silicone mat. 
And nowadays, we have stoves that are either glass top or they're coil. Now, when I started working at the center, I had never had a glass top stove. And so I was kind of nervous. And I thought, how am I going to be able to use this stove? And they had this all figured out. We just took part of that silicon mat and we measure the stove and cut out the measurement there. And these work amazing. So what you do is you put the guide, that we call them a pan guide. Um, and I don't think this is a new thing, but it, it works really well for us. And you put it on the stove. And then if you want to, you bring your pan up against the guide. And then you just have to move it out a little bit so that it's on the burner correctly centered. Um, and we always teach uh, centering your pan before you ever turn the stove on. It's just, that's just, that's the order we teach it. Um, another thing about uh, the guide is that you, you just bring that pan up there and it's very sticky, so it doesn't move. You can see that it doesn't move on the stove, so it stays there once it's put. And so we put it like that. Um, so that's how we um, take care of using a glass top stove. We just put these silicon guides and we can just cut them for anybody's um, stove. And we just use those silicon mats and they're perfect. It works perfectly. All right, um, I'm gonna move this pan out of the way. The next thing I wanna talk about is um, our stove right here. We have marks on our dial. So off is always at 12 o'clock. So I have a, a mark on the dial and a mark on the stove itself. And then if you want to, if you turn it and press and you move it to one o'clock position, you get high and it clicks in. Then down here, if I keep my thumb on my mark on my dial, I can line it up with the mark that's on the stove for medium. And then medium low is at nine o'clock position. We don't have that marked. And then the simmer again has two marks, two dots for the 11 o'clock position where simmer would be. And then once you get it to the top and off, it clicks in there and you can hear that clicking sound. And I even teach people just to use their clock position. So off is 12 o'clock, medium is six o'clock, um, medium low is nine, medium high is three. And then the, the markings, the simmer and the high. Um, so even if your stove isn't marked, you can use it if you need to. Uh, the other thing we do is our oven. And um, these on the very right side of our oven are point symbols and they come from APH. They are just a piece of smooth, well, they feel like tape on the front of them. And then they have a raised dot or a raised X or a circle or maybe an up and down arrow. And you just stick them on here and you can use them to find out where to press on the stove. So if we're gonna set this oven, we're gonna press bake, which is the one dot. And then we're gonna press our up arrow, which is right here. Oh. I don't know why that does that to me. I'm going to try that again. I didn't get my bake. There we go. Now, one press of my up arrow gives me 350. Yes. And I can hear my oven. This oven is really nice. It clicks. So we know that we got 350. And if we want to move the temperature up, we move by fives. 55, 60, 65, 70, 75. And then it'll preheat and it gives us a preheat um, warning that it's done. We're ready to cook if you want to. And then the X is just cancel. 
and we got the stove all turned off and the oven. So it works really, really well. The last thing I want to show um, is this is an oven rack, uh, oven rack puller. Now they make smaller ones. Somebody made this for us many, many years ago and it's very long, but some people are really afraid of the oven. So if they need to pull the rack out using this, um, that is great. So what you do is you go over here. Oh, sorry. You go over here and you open the oven. Also on our oven rack, we have uh, a rack guard and it's made of fire uh, proof um, material. We got them at APH. And so if you accidentally bump a hand here or touch this by accident, it's gone here. But I want to show you the puller because this is the best. It is kind of hard. You have to be aware because I'm kind of on the right edge. So, and then if you need to push it back, you can push it back. But the guard on the rack makes it a little harder. There. So I would use this more to pull your rack out than to push it in. Because once you have something on there, it's harder to push in. But the pulling of it out is really nice with that. And it works well. And there's lots of different types of rack pullers. And it works good. All right. Now I am going to take a small trip over here to our talking microwave. Uh, as far as marking and labeling is concerned, more is less. So you could probably see a little bit on my stove there that I don't have very many marks. I have my bake, I have my cancel, I have the two up and down arrows. Um, and the reason we do that is because if you put too many marks on there, then you forget what you've marked. And trust me, oh, you're going to say to yourself, well, I'm never going to forget what I said that's going to mean. But you do. You, you truly do. And I just know that for a fact because I, it happens to me. Um, so we mark our microwaves. And we also have a talking microwave, which I find uh, really wonderful. So I'm going to kind of show you how it works. I'm going to go over here if I can. Let's see. And this one has a keypad that has 12 circles on it. And if you think of them as a number pad, one, two, three on the top, four, five, six underneath, seven, eight, nine, uh, 10, 11, 12, kind of like the phone. And the first number one, okay. power, level, high, cook, time, not, set, set, cook, time, minutes. Okay, so one time, I must have been using the power and didn't turn the power button off. So I had to touch that button, the number seven, in order to make the set time button work over here. Quick time, not set, set, quick time, minutes. So now if you want to set minutes, you go over here to the three. One minute, two minutes. Now if you hold it. Three, five, ten minutes. It, it goes up in increments of five. If you want to put seconds, then you have to press two. So set quick time seconds. And then you hold that down. One, five, 10, 15 seconds. Now we've got it set. So we're ready to cook. We use number four to turn it on. Power level high, 10 minutes, 15 seconds. Microwave running. And then we use five to turn it off. Microwave halted 10 minutes, 10 seconds remaining. Now, there's no clear button on here. In order to clear it, you just press this one button until it says set cook time again. Cook time, 10 minutes, 10 seconds, set cook time, minutes. Okay, so now we, the, the time is out, cleared out. Now, if I want to set, like, maybe for medium or defrost or low, I have to press this to make sure. Cook time, not set. Then I'm gonna go here and hold my power button, which is the number seven. Power level, high, set, power level. Now, if we go to our three button, which seems to be our up and down arrows. Medium, 
Low. Defrost. And then? Power. Level. Defrost. And then we can go back and just set the time and do turn it on and turn it off the way you want to. Okay. Power. Level. Defrost. Okay. Cook. Time. Not. Set. There we go. Also, this microwave has a kitchen timer on it. You can use the same um, buttons to turn the speech um, louder or softer. Um, I am not sure if you can make it. I think it's just this speed of speech. Um, but it's, it's really kind of nice and you don't have to. I have a few marks on here because I had a student who needed to be able to feel it a little bit better to find the circles. So I put some um, bump, uh, point symbols on there, but that's how the talking microwave works. All right, excellent. So I have one more section of equipment that I'm going to talk about. And this is my labeling and organization section. And you'll find in your house, in the kitchen, um, you have all sorts of food products you want labeled, spices you want labeled, um, you know, under the sink you have your cleaning products that you want labeled so that you don't use something that isn't appropriate for the job you're doing. Um, so we want to be able to find a way to label um, things. And mostly I think we use uh, it for food products and for cleaning products. So I have my pen friend here and it has, this one is the pen friend one and I've made all my pen friend labels with my pen friend one. There are two more generations after this pen friend. Um, I'm gonna turn it on with the top button. Seems like three seconds is a long time. And then I have just put on my bottle, a tiny little kind of like round price tag, and it has a barcode on it, and you touch. Exercise sauce. Okay. Also, you can tell what the product is. You can also tell if it has an expiration date on it. Somebody has to tell you what that is, so you can put it on there and know when it's expired and you need to throw it out, which is really good. Um, I use the pen friend quite a bit. Oh, sorry, there I did it again. And it doesn't take anything to, um, you know, you just touch it to the label and you use the record button to make your own recordings. So the labels that you make with this pen friend, you can't use on any other pen friend, but the this pen friend. So if somebody brought their pen friend and use my labels, they would get, they wouldn't be able to use my labels. They would get my labels and not theirs. You know, I don't know how to explain that to you, but it's particular to your pen friend. Um, another thing about labeling is that you need to be able to label bottles like these. Now, these two are totally different um, bottles. I have the Worcestershire sauce label in Braille, and I have the pen friend label on here, but this bottle, I don't have any label on. And so this is gonna really mess me up. So sometimes I might have to use my non-visual cues to find out what this is, or I can use the Seeing AI app, which is amazing. So I'm gonna go get my phone and I'm gonna bring it out here. Let's see, I'm gonna turn. 1.51 p.m. Open Seeing AI. It takes a long time. Oh, nope, it doesn't want to. One. Open Seeing AI. Dirty. Oh, it reads my dishwasher with my back camera. My dishwasher says dirty. Okay, so now we have... We Buck, recognizing English, buck channel, short text, adjustable. Now, short text you can Slide use. Slide up or down with one finger to adjust the value. Now I have hints on. Hi. Ian. Cheyenne Facts. Rainer. Top nutrition for nutrition fact SL. About 50R. Boss. Nutricio. 
Ivo, Ivy, Soy, Sauce. I there it is. S. S. So we got it. Cyrillic letter. Recognizing English button. Okay, so we got Double it tap with, to short te with short text. So now. Channel, channel, short text, adjust document, product. I'm going to go to the product and use the barcode and search. And we have to wait for the sound. Document, product. Processing. Ivy soy sauce. Button. There it is. Get and more info. Yes, and then you have a get more info button and you can um, read what the label says. That's what's in the get more info. Um, this is amazing to me. Um, coming from somebody who lived during the time where labels were very inaccessible, to put this in my hand and be able to find the soy sauce that quickly is amazing. So seeing AI has a lot more things it can do, but I just wanted to show you it um, because it just really helps. You can use it to read instructions on cake mixes or hamburger helper or um, even on the cleaning products, you can read the instructions. There are things that I never even knew were on cleaning products instructions um, because I have used the Seeing AI to read um, the cleaning product. So I just wanted to show you that. That is the last um, uh, particular piece of equipment I use here today. Um, I'm so glad that everybody came and uh, watched. Um, I do have a few more things on the labeling button, but I noticed that my time is getting a little short. So um, I wanna leave some time for questions. Also, I wanna stress too, that the South Dakota Rehabilitation Center, uh, you can call us up. You don't have to have a referral to talk to us and ask us questions. Um, you can call the um, Rehabilitation Center in Sioux Falls at 605-367-5260. And the secretary is up the front. You tell them what problem you're having or something you need help with. And we, um, as skills of blindness teachers, can help you. Um, that's part of our outreach work. So don't hesitate to call us if you have a question because we want to serve the people of South Dakota. It's very important to us. Um, so also, this is just the first of our um, presentations. We're having quarterly presentations. So if my memory serves me correctly, I think in the next couple of months, we will be seeing um, Owen orientation and mobility coming on. So be on the lookout for orientation and mobility coming up. So I'm gonna stop here and open it up for questions. Thank you so much for attending. I appreciate your kind attention. So you guys have a marvelous day and I'll answer any questions right now. You can unmute yourself now if you have any questions and would rather ask via audio. And if nobody has anything, we'll just keep the meeting open for a few minutes, but uh, thank you very much for attending. Mary, this is Sandy. I did have a question that April helped me with. Just so that you know, I was really curious about the file that you use. Um, that looks like a great way to mark the um, measuring cups and um, measuring spoons. So thank you for showing that. Um, April was able to share with me the type of file that you yes. use. So it was I great to see that. Thank you so much. Thank you. I appreciate you um, saying something because we could have uh, brought that out and showed you. It's just a real file. I mean, <laughs> and when they told me, Mary, you have to learn how to do this. I'm like, I'm going to use a real file that can cut metal and things. Um, but it doesn't cut anything. It just makes the ridges in the cups. So, yes, it's a real file. Um, but it works amazing. You get a little dirty, but... That's all right. You can dust yourself off. So thank you, Sandy.
Any other questions? Don't be shy. You can ask questions. Where do you find a pen friend? The, the pen friend comes from the Royal National Institute for the Blind in uh, the United Kingdom. But Maxi Aids has pen friends that you can just order from them for about $150. What comes with a pen friend is the pen friend, the lanyard that you can you can put it on. It has like three sheets of stickers. It has a couple of magnetic labels that you can use that have the barcodes on it. And it's about $150, but it's all, you know, and you can back up your labels and it will, you can put them on the computer so that if something happens to your pen friend, uh, you can download back you know, bring them back to a new pen friend. Um, so there's a lot of things the pen friend can do. It can read audiobooks, download it from the computer. You can put music on it. I personally only use the pen friend for my labels in the kitchen here at the center. Um, but at Maxi Aids. And if you have any questions like that, we can certainly, if you call us again or email us, um, you can certainly email me at mary.carol at state.sd.us. But that's a good question. Marissa said, love the egg cracker. I will be getting one for my kids to use. Love the independence it offers. Um, Nancy said, where are you ordering the talking measuring cup from? The liquid measuring cup comes from Maxi Aids as well. Yep, Maxi Aids. They really have a lot of good things there. And it's just called a liquid measuring pitcher. Liquid measuring pitcher. April's putting links in the chat as well for a lot of these items okay. that we're talking about. All right. Um, so again, I'm so happy that people came and to listen and watch. We really want to get the information out about what is out there for blind and visually impaired. Um, for low vision people, the contrast is huge. Uh, the cutting boards um, is awesome. They just feel 10 million times better when they can just even see a little bit better to cut their vegetables up. Um, so all of the things that I sh showed you today are the ones that we use on a regular basis here at um, the Rehabilitation Center. I guess I want to thank you all again for coming. It's been my pleasure to uh, present this information for you and again, be looking for our next quarterly presentation in the next few months, possibly Owen and orientation and mobility. Thank you so much for coming. Have a great day.